Thanks, Mr. Stephen, and uh, greetings to all the attendees of this webinar session. So today, I really going to take you through some of the lessons that we have learned uh, in NetQuest while setting up and scaling the GCN COE. Uh, and these are basically based upon the personal experiences that we have and how we have really been operating. So from the agenda perspective, we really will be looking at the service portfolio and then how position the center of excellence as shared enterprise capabilities and on path of the excellence, what are the different lessons that have been learned. Okay. And some of these experiences probably will correlate with your experiences also from customer perspective and happy to field any questions. So these are purely from the uh, uh, BPM COE perspective rather than from technical aspects because technical aspects versus management or business manager's view would be slightly different. So just wanted to give that uh, thing straight away. Okay. Now, like in many other organizations, uh, in our organization too, COE is often the team leading the way in exploring and adopting new technologies, tools, practices. Uh, and the focus is basically on the four things, providing thought leadership and direction, establishing and promoting best practices, setting up reference models, providing consistency, and in some cases, uh, developing solutions as well. Uh, the exact mix of these capabilities and how they are organized depend upon the governance maturity, as well as the operating philosophy of the business on the centralized to decentralized Antonium. Effective implementation of BPM COE requires clearly defined three aspects, process discovery expertise, technical expertise, and service management. These, these capabilities are dependent upon four guiding principles, and those are basically standardization, leveraging assets, guidance, and measuring performance. And let me just uh, deep dive into these one by one. Okay, so when, we, when I talk about the standardization, this includes the standardization of templates, blueprints, repeatable processes, and methodologies. Uh, around some of the key work areas like architecture and design, development practices, estimations, uh, QA, uh, quality assurance, uh, integration design patterns. Uh, to be successful, members of COE need to be in tune with latest industry trends and emerging thought streams. Okay, And the latest thing that I can really say, the optimized thing that has been just displayed, that probably is a good example that uh, uh, BPM COE at NetQuest is looking forward to adopt. Okay. So this is really pacing up with the industry, how the industry is changing, and can we really take an Excel into continuous uh, improvement. Talking about leveraging assets, uh, I think when I say assets here, these are not just the technical assets or just the IPs. When I'm talking about uh, uh, assets, here we are clearly talking about the human assets, relationships, code and artifacts, okay, all put together because human relations are very, very, very important when we really talk about BPM COE. Uh, human assets, I think they, in the, each and every organization, there are many human assets that organization really would like to keep for a very, very long time in addition to the other technical aspects that we have just talked about. So moving on, uh, the next one is guidance and governance. Okay, so. The COE should be aware of all the significant work efforts in which organization is currently involved and has an interest of pursuing. Okay. The level of COE invel, uh, involvement in each and every uh, initiative could vary based upon different aspects. Uh, who owns the work, uh, the level of expertise in that work stream, uh, resource availability in COE at given point of time, and so on. The, uh, uh, conditions or use cases could be very different. Irrespective of involvement and ownership, when it comes to the general approach, the structure, and the style of work effort, the Center of Excellence team should possess the ability to not only guide and suggest, but also to govern the work. This means that the COE should be positioned as the authority entity that will cast the deciding vote on tool of choice, significant development, and methodologies. Uh, in light, it is advised that COE should form BPM design authority responsible for approving, governing the BPM design and implementation. Now, talking about performance, 
Okay. So one way of looking at the performance measurement is what optimize uh, the demo that we have uh, just saw. That is also good. So what it really is doing, it is helping us to track the success key results for a, pro uh, for a project or a, for a, a, a process. Okay. Similarly, the COE should also define the different measurement matrices that really define how we are going to ensure the uh, performance is being measured and how well we are performing. Now, from the customer perspective, customers always require visibility into future and thus establishing and maintaining a COE roadmap is beneficial. Centrally, our organization prescribed us to continuously deliver towards the committed architectural and business outcomes, which generally are strategic in nature and may run for multiple months or years as well. Uh, starting this year, our domain started using OKRs. Some of you may have heard about OKR practice, right? Which is nothing but object key results. This helps us to create and monitor uh, what we really are delivering at frequent interval, which generally is of 90 days, okay? So this is focused on short-term goals and key results, which has a span of 90 days only. Uh, measuring performance of COE standards, front door and incident management through various matrices is also important. This will help in marketing and selling the services across the organization. In line with these principles, in line with these principles, uh, did I miss one slide? No, okay. Uh, okay, in line with these uh, uh, principles, uh, the accomplishment of BPM COE stands on a success triangle for us. Okay, uh, people, process, and technology. Uh, when I really talk about people, people in the BPM COE should really have both soft skills as well as hard skills. Uh, who should really be working in a well defined structure with defined roles uh, that supports the effective collaboration? Really identify what is really going to be the right combination for your organization to participate in the BPM survey. Uh, talking about process, uh, build process through which all parts of the organization may collaborate and work using commonly shared practices and tools, build a self-service portal and community of practice to exchange knowledge. Again, these are two of the very important things that we have done and there's a, a huge success. The way we really have partnered with our customers. When I really say customers, it is really the different part of the organization from which uh, uh, we really are helping them, providing consistency and helping them develop the processes. Uh, when we talk about uh, technology, it's critical to have the proper technology with a prospective set of enterprise best practices and policies around it. When you build your initial platform or a strategy of provisioning platform, it must be scalable, secure, sized appropriately to accommodate future demand. Also, service management is critical to ensure value is regularly received by business, and to do so, continuous improvement should be part of your operating model. Though I have mentioned people, process, technology as three different parts, but essentially, if you look in here, uh, people, process, technology put together only define the success. So if you really want to success, focus on all these three dimensions and never neglect any of these. Okay, so uh, let's move on and let's understand what, are, what is going to be the best way to position your BPM as a central capability. Okay, now it makes a big difference whether your organization is strictly functional or has some level of process orientation. In the functional uh, organization, the business functions such as retail, commercial, personal, finance are operating as functional silos. In process organization, they are clear process owner responsible for long end-to-end -end processes, which potentially may cut through different functions. Now, in function organization, the processes are defined, but solution to business challenges are generally localized. Uh, this means even if same process outcome is required, the technology team will end up creating different solution, which is really gonna be thought and implemented in a completely new way. Uh, BPM evolution must be viewed within the culture and technical context of each company. There is no evolution path that fits all. 
Having said that, there are two common approaches to construct a BPM COE. Uh, I'd probably click the, yeah. Okay, and those two approaches uh, have been mentioned at the bottom, which is bottom up and the top down. When the practice it starts with a small project, evolves with demand from different areas, then practices of project teams are shared. And over a period of time, with increase and adoption of practices, PO is formed. Okay. Uh, uh, this is the typical approach in functional organization. Uh, and COE are tend to be formed when process orientation flinches. In a top-down approach, strategic direction, policy, planning occurs at just below the highest level of the company. In top-down approach, COE operational goals are well thought through and formalized. Talking about cultural ethics, during initial period of COE is shared knowledge, share, sharing knowledge and capability is core of bottom-up approach, whereas innovation, transformation forms the core of top-down COE. Now, in some organization, this is also closely associated with how the funding is going to be generated for BPM COE, okay? Whether that is going to be considered as part of the run the bank or change the bank. So really have thorough understanding how you really want to formalize and have a funding in place to operate not just for the current year, but years to come. Just an FYI kind of thing. Okay, now let's uh, move on and try to understand some of the lessons that uh, we really have learned. Uh, and some, believe me, like some of these lessons are learned the hard way. Uh, so I'm just gonna share some of them, uh, which really probably will make sense for you. So first and the foremost is BPM COE must have the support of senior leadership right from the CTOs and domain leads. BPA programs have potential to change the way business operates and having blessings from executive level. With the help in managing, will help in managing the people change aspects uh, because changing the process may completely redefine the mindset of some of the people and it really requires a new thinking in place. I have seen some of the most successful BPM implementation and some poor ones. And common thread in both types has always been the commitment, attention, process maturity of the executive leaders. The successful projects have excellent executive commitment, attention and understanding, while the poor, poor ones didn't. For the same reason, it is advocated that the head of COE should be high enough. Uh, unless it is high in the organization, COE will fail. Let me explain the importance of this aspect with a real-time example that uh, uh, I really encountered many a times in the organization. Based on sales pitch uh, of different vendors, different functions may opt for different solutions with or without uh, taking BPM COE in confidence. Uh, stressing that COE must be the final authority to take decisions on tools and technology, thus convincing, negotiating, and dialogue at executive level will be required. Unless head COE is senior, these conversations could be difficult. Uh, let's understand the second uh, lessons that I heard learned. A common challenge with many processes that they are not explicitly known, understood, or shared by everyone involved. Also, with each participant team, there may be some tasks which are carried out outside the process or outside the technical solution I should say. Uh, but process owners are not aware about it. To build solution for future during inspection, uh, invest in discovering the as is process, its limitations, improvement opportunities. Few of the things you need to take into account are baseline outcomes, voice of customer, understand needs, desires, and frustration, cross-functional teams, uh, system of record, and the data architecture as well. Once clarity, clearly, once clarity is attained, document the to be process and agree it with the stakeholders so that business team may plan for future remediations, if any. Unless to be process is ready, don't go for development or go with no regret activities. And I, before I really jump on uh, it, one uh, thought really struck my mind is uh, I learned when we really talk about the methodologies that are generally adopted by Japanese. Uh, 
about 60% of the work is done into the analysis phase or the requirement analysis phase. That really correlates with, we really need to have a clearly defined process, whether that's as is or to be, we really need to invest into that. Okay. So don't jump onto the process implementation without really spending sufficient time there. Uh, moving on, uh, BPM is a journey, as we all know, uh, and users evolve the idea of automation about visualizing, implementing, and the power of tool. And sure, you have regular playbacks with the business as over time the requirements evolve, and many a times process evolves seeing playbacks. Also keep people's psychology in mind as some of the BPM projects may significantly automate the process, which and users may take time to accommodate. Regular playbacks shorten the adoption time. So keep the customer focus whenever you are really automating the process. Each technology has its applicability in end-to-end -end design. Use right architectural design and technology for right purpose. Don't overburn BPM solution. BPM is good in managing processes, so use it for that purpose only. I have seen some BPM projects building complex web applications, going much beyond BPM, ending up in complex web applications. Uh, for example, if UI need to be responsive to smoother adjusts to various screen sizes or gadgets, go for headless BPM implementation as out-of-box BPM UI uh, technology may not be appropriate. Uh, this will provide you an opportunity to use right web technology framework and not only to tech, not really to go with any kind of technical solution. Another example of relevance is data gathering journals or wizard-based applications. Uh, I personally recommend using decision management tools like Drools or DMN for that purpose mm -hmm. and not BPM, by the way. Uh, I have seen a few projects making this mistake and making BPM applications too complex to manage. Uh, COE need to be the flag bearer of change. Uh, as the old saying has it, time and tide fade for nobody, and nowhere in, is that truer than in technology space. Businesses need to adopt new technologies or risk failing behind the competition. Thus, it is required that the COE is always evaluating and exploring right tools, designs, architectures, and technology to bring value to business for the latest and leading industry training, uh, trends. Now, don't run BPM projects as typical IT projects. Uh, it's important business and technology teams come together. For example, if ISCA methodology is used for project execution, then business SMEs should be part of ISCA team. Uh, interestingly, uh, uh, I really tossed up a word uh, which now is not really kind of I should say it has become the term used in the uh, industry, but uh, I really touched up a word, the business technology, uh, to really bring both business and technology together so that re really can work together as seamless team. Okay, you may notice that I have specifically removed the change team from this. This is driven by a psychology that some people are passionate about the change when they are involved they are engaged. You know why? Because for the first time, they really feel engaged. Uh, they have been given a chance to think about themselves and their business. And believe me, irrespective of the complexity of the process, they will find the way it should work. Okay. Now, also interestingly, what you really see is process automation is based on three-dimensional framework. And uh, uh, it has got three excesses, technology, service, and customer experience. And I really can spend a lot of time talking about this framework because this is very close to my heart, but probably I will save that for my next uh, session. But whenever you are designing a BPM solution, keep these three aspects in mind that that should have equal emphasis when we are selecting the right design for the process. Now, BPM life cycle is cyclic, as we all understand. Uh, it typically has got different phases because different methodologies propose different uh, phases. But uh, what I really see is 
uh, it has four different phases, define, implement, operate, and measure. Okay, it is important, COE has capability in all these phases and BPM uh, business managers leverage them. Continuous improvement is at the center of the heart of this life cycle. For my experience, about 25% of the projects die in first two to four years if continuous improvement is not undertaken. Uh, the reason is simple, business process changes over time due to organizational technology advancement, industry domain, or compliance reasons. If technology solution is not adjusted, then it is ought to die down. So make sure continuous improvement methodology is well-defined and should be undertaken regularly. Uh, I have been part of debates and discussion on centralized and federated model of COE. One model of COE suggests that the COE should be limited to consultancy and development, should be done by domain specific project teams. Frankly, I fail to understand when COE lays practices and guidelines for project teams for automation, then why should they not implement? They have all the right technologists, so why to restrict them to ideation only? Also, developing Sorry, uh, also development uh, provided opportunity to COE to calibrate and propose practices and evolve them as and when required. I also have been part of discussion where COE is proposed to be the, the sh uh, should be doing the development for the whole organization. That also is not a good model as a number of resources in COE becomes the limiting factor to speed to market and bringing process automation to bank. Also, there's a risk that core responsibility of COE to set vision and driving innovation is compromised. Now, based on my experience, I really say you should centralize, centralize whatever you can and federate whatever you can. COE should build framework to enable self-service so that homogeneous practices are followed and there's a centralized solution to common challenges. Each federated domain should have freedom and independence to bring innovation and transformation. It's important COE has mechanism through which federated domains may share their learnings, local practices, and niche developments with COE so that the standardized practices are established across the organization. I also advocate that the COE should build reference models and deliver key projects for the bank. This will boost stakeholders' confidence in the COE and will ensure good health of practice. Uh, I touched based upon this aspect uh, a while back, which is people change management. This is an important area as it deals with personal as aspects of a BPM project. There have been multiple articles written on why process improvement and BPM project failure occurs. This is growing belief that the personal aspect of improvement projects have not been addressed in sufficient detail. And this really uh, closely correlates with the user-centric design. If we really develop the solution, keeping those design practices in mind and people change aspect in focus, uh, I'm pretty sure the success will be uh, there with the BPM process in automation. Last but not the least, monitoring and measuring the operational health of any process is most important, but it is unfortunately the most neglected area. Many of the business managers fail to put clear KPIs and SLAs, and thus no insights are generated. To me, if it fails the key objective of implementing BPM, and thus BPM is mainly considered as workflow management tool in some organization. The key strength of BPM is when insights are generated and tools like optimize provide visibility into process and team performance and so the key strength of bpm is when insights are generated and tools like optimize provide visibility into process and team performance and simulations can be executed to establish trend analysis and forecasting to me definition of process excellence is happy customer happy process and happy automation and hold this equation throughout the life cycle of process. Amaze customers with agility and delivering value repeatedly. Process is happy when insights are exceeding the business goals. Automation is happy when continuous improvement is practiced regularly. 
that's all for the day uh, from me. Uh, happy to take any questions in the Q&A session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.